Ashley with All Country News, and I'm here with Hayden Joseph. How are you doing today, Hayden? I am doing great. How are you? Good. My first question for you is, what would you be doing if you didn't have a career in music? So I would probably still be a strategy consultant in New York, if we're being honest. Uh, and with that, I probably would take it to, I would want to be on the business side, so doing strategy work or business development and operations within a streaming company. Did you always know that you would be working in music? No. Um, so, I mean, I've sung and performed my whole life. So that aspect of my life has been constant. But growing up, if you go up in the Southeast and you're remotely intelligent, your parents tell you you're supposed to be a doctor or a lawyer. So I, I came to Vanderbilt in Nashville and I actually, I majored in neuroscience and finance thinking I was going to go to med school. Uh, I did decide pretty quickly that I had absolutely no interest in being a physician, despite what my parents had told me my entire life. Uh, and so that's why I really decided to go work uh, in, in strategy consulting in New York for a couple of years. You are one of the, literally one of the only openly gay artists in country music. How do you think that experience has shaped your perception in music? I'm gonna be honest with you. I, I wanted to believe before I came here that it wouldn't matter. I'm not saying I've been discriminated against because I'm gay specifically. I will say though, my experiences as a gay male are different than experiences of a straight male. And because of that, the subjects I write about are not the same as what has become the country music norm. So what is the country music standard is guys wearing certain types of clothes that sing about certain things. It's usually meeting girls at a bar or like driving around in trucks. I do neither of those things, but I still love country music. So I would say the hardship has come from turning in songs that are a little bit deeper emotionally, that are, are trying to be all encompassing emotions, but are emotional and are not about those things. I have repeatedly seen them kind of scoffed at because they're not about those things uh, that, you know, I've been told directly and I've posted about this on my TikTok, like in writing, like this is too sissy for a boy, a woman should sing it. Um, there are a lot of problems with that statement for so many reasons, um, but I'm told a lot when I sing, you know, you need to dumb it down a little bit, or you're like a little bit too polished, or, you know, I, I feel like I, I love the honesty of your writing, maybe hold it back. And I used to take like, I love the honesty of your writing as a compliment. And then I started to realize like, what they're really saying is you're showing too many emotions for a man. All that being said, though, I know that people exist that are open to a story that tells more. I know they exist. It's just a couple executives don't want them to be heard and I don't understand why. What has been one of the most rewarding moments in your career so far? I read most messages that I get on social media um, and it is really, really rewarding for to, to have other gay men or whoever is messaging me saying, your song different or your songs have given me hope for country music. Um, you know, it's so nice to have somebody like me singing. It's so nice to have somebody singing a song that is just so genuine and so true about this to help me get through this hard time or to make me hear somebody like me in a genre that I love. Which artist or band is your dream collaboration? Shania Twain. Yeah. Hi, Shania, if you see this, I've, I've tagged you literally an embarrassing amount of times on social media on <laughs> my Instagram stories. Or uh, I actually had two videos of two, my two most popular videos on TikTok or two of my most popular are me singing Shania Twain in the car. And I didn't expect them to blow up at all, but they did. Um, and she's not on TikTok. So the one platform I had a chance, Shania's not on. Um, I joke, joke and not joke. So you know how there's like this big trend in country music now that people are doing reboot albums where they bring in new, new artists to like record their old songs. Yeah. My goal and like outline, like literally on my vision board is when Shania Twain does her Come On Over album in two years, her like 25th anniversary, because I know it's happening or I pray it's going to happen. <laughs> I want to be one of the up and coming artists that gets called. Like you can have, I don't I don't care if she gives you the last song in the album. Give me whatever song you want, Shania. I know all the words to all of them. Um, just let me sing it with you, please. Uh, she was my first concert. She pulled me on stage with her in 1998 in Greenville, South Carolina. Uh, and... I got on stage with her and I had a toy microphone and I knew every song on that CD except for one that I always made my mom skip in the car. And that was the song that no. she, was, she said, can you sing it with me? And I said, I don't know how. I know it now, Shania. Uh, anyway, all that being said, Shania Twain, uh, you are a goddess. The world doesn't deserve you. Second would be Taylor Swift. I think Taylor Swift is the best songwriter of our time. So, you know, those are obvious. You still go shooting for the literal stars. Well, Hayden, thank you so much for sitting down and chatting with me today. I hope you one day get to be on Shania Twain's album, and I can't wait to see what you come out with next. Oh, thank you guys so much for having me. It's been great talking to you. It ain't fancy, it's just backwards bougie.